Could this be the most inspiring interview ever? I know that sounds like a boastful claim, and I've interviewed tons of incredibly inspiring people over the years, but I think this just might qualify. So stay tuned as I bring you part two of my interview with best-selling author and passionate entrepreneur, Sherry Fink. I'm Bob Baker, and this is the Creative Entrepreneur Podcast, Season 3, Episode 5. Welcome to The Creative Entrepreneur. I can't wait to share part two of my interview with Sherry Fink with you. I know you're going to enjoy it and be incredibly inspired by it. Just a couple of quick things before we get to that. First, I want to thank four specific individuals. Here are their names. Kathy Yost, John Albert Thomas, Elon Chalford, and Joshua Liston. Those are the four awesome people who are my most recent patrons at patreon.com. I wanted to give them a shout out to thank them for their support. And that's also one of the perks that they get for being a supporter of my mission to educate, inspire, and empower creative people around the world. You've probably heard of Patreon. It's a site where fans can support their favorite creators, uh, you know, musicians, uh, YouTubers, podcasters, authors artists, and so on, with ongoing micropayments throughout the year for as little as one, two, three, five dollars or so a month. So if you want to find out more about it, go to patreon.com forward slash Bob Baker to not only learn more about Patreon, but to learn more about how you can support me and what I'm calling the empowered artist movement. One of the cool perks that my patrons at the $5 level and above just got is access to the ebook version of a brand new book. It's my 15th title. I'm really excited about it. It's called The Passion Principles, 101 Ways to Express Your Creativity and Share It with the World. This book is a little bit different than my others. It actually does not go like in depth into business strategy and marketing tips and all this stuff. Instead, it is chock full with bite-sized chunks of wisdom on the creative process, on the challenges that all creative people face, and then ways that you can attract fans and share your work and market and sell it. But it was purposely designed to be an easy read that you can pick up and just flip open and find a little nugget of wisdom that you can apply to your creative life. As I record this, the ebook is available on pre-order in the Amazon Kindle store. It officially publishes on June 29th, 2017, which just happens to be my birthday. That's right, I'm celebrating with the publication of my 15th book. And right around that time, or shortly thereafter, the paperback version will be available. And then a little later, hopefully in July or sometime over the summer, I will publish the audiobook version of The Passion Principles. So I'll have links to all that stuff in the show notes if you'd like to check it out or pre-order it, or maybe by the time you listen to it, it'll already be available and you can just go and grab your copy now. The feedback I've been getting on it from a group of about 40 uh, beta readers, as they're called, has really been incredible. So I have high hopes for what this can do when it reaches a larger group of people and artists who need this information, need these ideas that they can implement and activate in their own lives. Perhaps you and your life? By the way, if you're catching the audio podcast version of The Creative Entrepreneur, I encourage you, if you don't already, to subscribe to the podcast in iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, or wherever you consume podcasts. And if you happen to be catching this on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel there, where I dish out a lot of inspiration and career advice for musicians, writers, visual artists, and creative people of all kinds. Now let's get on to that interview with Sherry. If you missed part one, I encourage you to go back and listen to season three, episode three. In that one, she shared her story of how her first book was published and her overall attitude and her story. It's just amazing. As I was editing this, I just got enthusiastic all over again. There's just something about listening to her voice, her story, and her attitude that just pumps you up and gives you the feeling that you can go out and conquer the world. So let's jump into that part two. Uh, In this one, I just asked her about three key factors that were responsible for her success. And here's where she starts answering that section. We'll pick it up there. I'll talk to you at the very end when it's over. I would say number one by far is authenticity. Mm. Like that was something that I had to learn. Like in the corporate world, I did really well, but I felt like a corporate robot. 
I was what everybody else needed me to be to do my job. And now, like, I get to be the pink and sparkly unicorn that I've always been, you know, (laughs) (laughs) and, and kids see that, like, they can tell, especially kids, like, they know if you're not being authentic, they can tell and and they don't pay attention to you. But when you can walk in and look them in the eye and they see, oh my God, that's really an eight-year-old girl looking back at me. You know, I see myself in her and I see myself in them. That makes all the difference. And then I don't get as stressed out about things either because I'm just like, well, I, I just be myself. Like, however it goes, it'll be fine. You know? <laughs> that's awesome. That's one of the things, um, yeah, some people know uh, that I, I teach and perform improv comedy, uh, which I've done off and on over the years. And there's so many reasons that I love doing it. But one of the reasons I love ha- having students come to my classes is that it gets uh, a lot of adults, older adults come. I think it, that it helps them get back in touch with that playful, childlike nature, not being so damn serious all the time. <laughs> and it sounds like uh, that's part of your mission, only you do it in different ways. Yeah, that's just the way I live life, you know, like. I want I want everyone to be better for having interacted with me, like you, and not be, not trying hard to do it either. I just be who I am and like mm-hmm. I don't know. It's it's very it's it's all about people again. It's about being who you are and caring about people. And that's and those are themes through your uh, through the Little Red Rose, I believe, and other in some of those other children's books too. So yeah, hopefully you instill that at a young age, and, uh, <laughs> and we always have to be reminded of it, though, as we get older. That's for sure. Oh yeah, um, especially when we're older. Yeah. So authenticity is number one. Well, how about number two? Number two for me would be passion and determination, mm. because I really believe in what I'm doing, and I know it's my destiny. Like I can feel it, and when I have that well up of passion for it, I will leap through fire. I will do what it takes, and I think a lot of people, they don't allow themselves to get in touch with that because then they're so afraid of what it will look like in their lives. Mm-hmm. Because at, the, at first it creates havoc, right? Like there's chaos as the, what you had built crumbles so that what's really meant to be built can, can form. Mm. And so I think the determination to get through all of that. And now I just uh, spoke at a writer's conference this past weekend and I saw all these aspiring authors who are just starting out and I thought, wow. I didn't even realize how far I've come most days because I'm just, I'm always focused on the future. I'm enjoying the present, but I I see like three, four years into the future. And that's what I measure myself against, you know, how close I am to that versus how far I've come in just six years. And when I'm talking to them, it really, I'm like, wow, I'm a very determined person. Very determined. By comparison, yeah, when you see where they are mentally, you mean? Anyone can achieve it. It just takes a lot of work. Mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of work. I mean, one of my one of my closest friends, after staying with me for a week and seeing, you know, behind the scenes of my life, he was like, "If people saw what it took, they wouldn't want it." And I was like, "Wow, I never thought of it that way," <laughs> you know, because I'm having fun while I'm doing it most of the time. So I'm just the determination. I think is um, key for me. I wrote a blog post a few years ago called the new gatekeepers. And so, uh, you know, the, the gate, the old gatekeepers and the old business model was you needed to get the approval of a, you know, some, someone at a book publishing company or a record label or a TV network or whatever to get permission to then you give you exposure to a wider audience. The new gatekeepers are, well, for one consumers or fans, because you can reach a, a worldwide audience through Amazon and through all these different sites. So it's consumers that determine what's worthy of their attention, their money, and, and all that good stuff. But then, but also, I think the new gatekeeper is each individual artist or, or entrepreneur's willingness to embrace the workload or, or what they need to learn, the actions that need to be taken. And, and there are so many people that are resistant to that that in, the individuals themselves are are, the, are like thinning out the herd, I guess, because they're not willing yeah. to do that stuff. Does that, does that make sense? Yes, you know I mean? they're opting out. Yeah. Yeah, and so even though the, the, everyone has access to the playing field, there's still not not everyone is going to be successful. There's still going to be a small percentage of people who succeed. It's just the the reasons why are different. Yeah, right? and and to and just to be clear too, like I'm not, I have nothing against people who are not creative entrepreneurs. Like there are people who make a decision, and it's a very honorable decision because it makes sense for their life to to serve in the corporate world, to do something different than I'm doing, and I have mad respect for that. Yeah, because that's what's right for them in that moment with their families and you know their obligations. Like I totally get that, and I have respect for the people who want to work hard and do something completely different too. I think as long as you're working hard and you're you're in alignment with who you are, it doesn't really matter what industry you're in or what job you're in or what you're creating. 
whether it's creating a happy home for your family or creating a new book or a music or, you know, a play or whatever. Like, I respect that. And also wanted to say, too, traditional publishing has its place. Indie publishing is not right for everybody. I mean, it, it's not easy. And so people who really want that traditional publishing deal, like, I say you go for it. If that's your dream, go after it with everything you've got. And then if you, if you want to explore something else, try indie. Try something – like get your art out into the world, whatever path feels right for you. Yeah, so it's a couple of things that – yeah, not everyone is, is cut out to be self-employed. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great point to make. So people shouldn't feel guilty if they just feel more comfortable in a, in a structure that a, that a company or whatever gives them. But yeah, that there is work to be. There's just a different set of of actions that need to be taken to go a traditional route. There's still a lot of work involved, a lot of people connections, a lot of the same things apply. You're just taking a different route, and so sometimes people think it's going to be easier to get a traditional publishing deal. It's still going to take. It's still going to. It's still like hitting the lottery, and you're still going to do a lot of work to get attention. And it's just a different different type of job that you that yeah, you do. Yeah, it's absolutely yeah. true. And you mentioned the word fun, which is I think is awesome because uh, a lot of people who are successful reframe things that other people think are a drudgery. And so the work for you is fun. The marketing probably is fun. Connecting and reaching people with your message, it's, it exhilarates you as opposed to, well, I'm sure there's times when you're drained. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but having that, just reframing those activities makes all the difference, I think. Yeah. Well, and there's there's a way to walk into something too, like – I'm a firm believer in extraordinary Mm self-care. If you don't take care of yourself, you're not going to have anything to give anybody else. Mm. So by taking care of yourself every day, making that 100% your own responsibility, then when you walk into a situation where you have opportunity to create or connect or, you know, any of those things, you're going to be at your best and you're going to have the best experience and the best impact. And I love that. That's what's most exciting. Absolutely. Wow, great. Great advice here. We haven't even got the tip number three uh, on, your, <laughs> on the hit list here. Well, number three for me would be inspired action. Mm, okay. I get ideas, and when I can't stop thinking about something, that's when I know I need to go for it. Like It could just be like a little tickle that's always there, and, I, and with each of my books, that's what's happened. It's like it, it just keep turning it around in my mind, and I get excited about it, and I, even when I'm scared, I'm like, wow, what would it be like? to hold that book in my hand? What would it be like to know that I made a difference for one child, that someone believes in themselves now? Like, what would it be like if, as a little kid, someone like me today walked into that school and showed them that a woman could be an author, that a woman from a small town who grew up with nothing could have a life like I have? Like, it would have changed the way that I looked at everything. Mm. So... I just keep taking inspired action to keep doing those things. And, and like you said, like it, it attracts really amazing opportunities. Absolutely. Oh, I love this. Wow. You know, I, I, I have to be honest here that one of the reasons, even though I'm a pr- live a pretty empowered life myself, uh, you know, one of the reasons that I do these, all these interviews is self-serving because I get inspired <laughs> just hit by <laughs> conversations with awesome people like you. And then I get to share this with hundreds, thousands or whatever of listeners, you know? And so, uh, I love it. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I, I love being inspired. I love that emotional connection. Like it's my favorite thing. Yeah. So this type of conversation, like I'm with you, like I'm feeling very empowered. I'm like, I'm going to go create something amazing today. <laughs> hurry, get hurry up and get over this interview, Bob, so I can go on and make something. <laughs> so <laughs> no, cool. So not everyone has the same kind of mindset. And when someone like sees your photos or actually is listening to this interview, they might think, man, she's so up all the time. How can that be? And it might make someone feel like, geez, I don't feel that way all the time. There must be something wrong with me. But I, so let's talk about like like I couch this in a in the question about like share a major business or creative challenge that you face. But if if you have anything just to add about you know what's do you deal with being depressed or with being frustrated and you have those moments, but we can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, because I think there might be misconception that are are you that way a hundred percent? I have a feeling probably not. <laughs> but, I mean, uh, I am a human being. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just like everybody listening, I am human. <laughs> and uh, and so in my humanness, you know, I struggle with doubt too. Mm-hmm. I think fear holds everybody back to some degree. It's just how long are you going to let it stop you? You know? So for me, I think the biggest the biggest challenge I ever faced was having the courage to have that first book come out because 
I had been bullied and I was in a very self-protective mode because my, my solution, my half, <sighs> half ass solution to that, because I couldn't come up with anything better, was just not to shine. Mm. So when the book came out, I didn't want to talk about the origin story. And of course, everybody wants to know the origin story. And I was scared to share it, like really scared. And I mean, I would burst into tears when I would tell the story initially. And I had to really work on that to be, and, and I was afraid to speak about it, things on stage too. So like all these like um, fears that I had, what I realized was that everybody's had an experience like that. Everyone's felt left out. Everyone's felt made fun of. And if they haven't, they're probably the bully and they need the message even more. <laughs> Good point. You yeah. know, and it's, it's really rare when there's someone who's never felt that way. But we all need it. And every time I share that story, I kid you not, every single time, at least one person will reach out to me, whether they wait to the end of the talk and come after everybody else has left and share it with me, or they call me after an event, or they, they write to me after a radio show. Every single time, at least one person will come forward and say, I'm going through that right now. My best friend went through that. My child is going through that. Every mm. single time. Mm. So it really... Um, it empowered me. It made me feel like by sharing my vulnerability and my humanness, I was able to help someone else ease their pain a little bit more. And then with the speaking thing, like originally I was very heavy on uh, what they teach you, right? Like walk this way this many times, look in the eye of that person, then breathe, then do this, then do that. Never hold your book on this side of the stage because it's a negative thing, a negative association. Always put it over here in the front, blah, 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 blah. Oh my, God. my God. When I'm thinking all those things, I am not focused on the people in the audience at all. All I was worrying about is the way that I looked and sounded and doing the right thing, the quote unquote right thing. Yeah. And when I let go of that, and I just speak from the heart. Like sometimes I don't know what story I'm going to tell. You know, I, I know what point I want to make and, and I'll get an inspired thought and I'll just go with that. You know, sometimes I laugh at myself. Sometimes I cry. It doesn't matter because it's not about me. It's about the people sitting there giving me their attention. Right. And that's as long as you keep the focus on making a difference for them and having an impact for them and don't worry so much about how you look or how you sound or any of those things. It's such a magical experience. And every time before I get on stage, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I really want to make a difference. And I say like almost like a little prayer. I'm not a religious person, but I'll say, please let whatever's meant to come through me, come through me without my interference. Mm. And when you do that, you let go. There's the beauty of it is that you're not in your head the whole time. You can be in your heart. You can say things and you, you know, are you going to hit it, get it right every single time? Nope. But people aren't even going to care because they know that you're being yourself. You're being a human. And that's what people can relate to. So I, I say that those challenges I overcame by focusing on what really mattered, which wasn't me. <laughs> that's cool. And yeah, actually, one and not some of the advice that I give, for especially for public speaking, is uh, the a way to become a better public speaker and get over nerves is to focus. You focus more on the message and less on the messenger, which is you. Right. Yeah, that's brilliantly put. Let's see here. So you, we're, we're both authors. Obviously, books mean a lot to us. But turning the, the tables, uh, name a book uh, that changed your life, Sherry, and uh, and why that title? Um, you know, I would say the Harry Potter series. Really? Yes, because I was late to the party. So I, I was in grad school, and I bought the first three books in paperback for a dollar a piece at a Hallmark store on clearance. And I thought, I think I've heard of this before. And at the time, I had been reading a bunch of stuff for grad school, and that was pretty boring, you know. And then I was reading women's fiction. So everything that people told me that I should be reading for my demographic, I hated because I'm not like those women. Like, I'm not Bridget Jones, and I'm not <laughs> a catty, shoe-obsessed, little dog-carrying woman. Like, and I don't know any women like that. Like, I... I just didn't see myself represented on the page in a way that was flattering and authentic. So I was getting frustrated with the books that were out there that were popular at the time. I, I couldn't understand why they were so popular when the, I didn't feel that the portrayals of women, although co comedic possibly, I just didn't think they were positive. So I stumble upon these books. I buy them all for $3 total. 
uh, the first three books. I get home. I open the cover. I kid you not. I read for like 48 hours straight. Oh my God. I read all three of them. I didn't even want to go to sleep. Like I couldn't believe how attached I felt to the characters from the first page. And it had been a really long time since I had been excited about reading. And that's why I always tell parents and teachers and kids that if you don't like reading, you just haven't discovered the right book. Because once I read those, like I, it, my reading speed got so much faster because I wanted to know what happened next. And then that, when I read that, this is many, many years ago now, I thought, gosh, if I could create a world like that, that could transport other people and embed within it positive messages, how amazing would that be? And so I just had this little seed of a desire that was planted when I read that, those first three books. And I didn't know at the time that I was going to be a writer. I had no idea I was going to write children's books. But I, I really think that those books changed my life because they made it fun to read again. They introduced me to a whole new way. And J.K. Rowling's story is so inspiring. Right. When people say, what's the one person that alive or dead that you'd want to have lunch with? She's my person. Wow. That's very cool. That's very a very unusual choice because usually it's some business book or some inspirational book. But yeah, it's a it's a fantasy or whatever that inspired you or awakened you to the possibility of what another writer could create for the reader, which later came in handy, I'm sure. And it heralded the beginning of the the wave of YA books. And at the time, like I think a lot of us, we try to read what's appropriate mm-hmm. for us. And I realized, like, I am not those people, and I don't have to be. Like, my authentic self wants to read these kinds of stories, and that's totally cool. And I think that's really important for people to realize, like, you don't have to be up on dramas if you don't like dramas. Right. Go with what you love. Exactly, no matter what the original target audience is. (laughs) Yeah, it doesn't even matter. So this next question, I think we've kind of hit on it. It should be obvious to anyone who's listened thus far, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Like, what truly motivates you to do all the stuff that you do? Another way to to say it is, what's your big why? I want to make a big positive difference. Not big, massive positive difference. I... I like going to bed knowing that people smiled because they encountered me in some way and not just smiled, but they they believe in themselves on a deeper level. And they say, wow, if she can do it, I can do it. And they go after whatever it is that makes them excited about life. That's what I most want to do in life. That's cool. And that's uh, just to highlight what you just said. So a lot of people like to be out there so they can, people will notice them so that their stature is improved or there's, they have a bigger fan base or whatever, but you, you've turned that around. You want people just not, not to really necessarily know about you, but to feel better about themselves, which is a really big shift than some of the more materialistic maybe pursuits. (laughs) People. Yeah, because it really doesn't have anything to do with me. Right. I mean, yeah, I'm having fun. I want to share something that I think is cool. I want to shout out people I believe in, people who make a difference for me, kids who are doing extraordinary things. Like, I want to use my voice to champion the light in mm-hmm. the world the and expand it. You know, I want to be a part of that, and it's I'm just a channel for it. That's awesome. That's it. And then uh, I imagine uh, you've probably already got in the works some uh, – Harry audacious plans. Is there something, in fact, I'll just use some of your own wording here. Is there something that's sort of uh, it's begging to come forth? Something that is a reoccurring desire that you have a feeling you're going to be acting on in the coming months or year? Um, you know, interestingly, yes. I have been asked over the years many, many times and have toyed with the idea, but the timing hasn't been quite right for me, but now feels like it may be the time to explore it. I believe that my, I'm going to be writing a personal development book, an inspirational book. I I devour those kinds of messages. I think they're so powerful and I don't know, I'm playing around with it right now. I'm just doing um, some drafting of what that might look like and we'll see. (laughs) Based on this interview, you've got plenty of material to work with. (laughs) You've got, <laughs> Thank you. You've got the attitude. You got the personal experience. That's awesome. So, Sherry, uh, where can people go to find out more about you online? Uh, the best place would be my website, which is www.sherryfink.com, and it's s h e r i f i n k dot com. 
You can also connect with me on Facebook. I'm at facebook.com slash Sherry Fink fan. And on Twitter and Instagram, I am at Sherry underscore Fink. That's right. That's important for the underscore. I will link to uh, these and a lot of other things that we uh, talked about in the show notes. Well, I, wow, I just, I'm just blown away by this interview. You are an inspiration and um, you, I know you've inspired me and obviously thousands of other people and uh, of all ages, it sounds like. And well, I can't wait to see what you're going to do next. So Sherry, thank you so much for uh, being my guest and sharing your story today. Thank you. I had a blast. <laughs> so was I right? Or was I right? Pretty damn inspiring interview, huh? I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. And if you want to hear more interviews like this, more advice for creative people of all types, I would love to stay in touch with you. And the best way to do that is with email. In fact, I encourage you right now to get on the Creative Entrepreneur VIP list. And I'll even give you some free stuff. Off when you do. The main thing I'm going to give to you is free access to my course called 30 Ways to Become an Empowered Artist on Udemy. It's about three and a half hours of video training sessions. All you have to do to get that is to go to promoteyourcreativity.com. All the information you need to get on the list is right there. Also, don't forget about the brand new book called The Passion Principles, 101 Ways to Express Your Creativity and Share It with the World. A link to that will be in the show notes. And if you'd like to support my efforts on Patreon, like Kathy, John, Elon, and Joshua, who I listed earlier, like they do, and dozen or two others, please visit patreon.com slash Bob Baker to find out more about that. I'd really appreciate your support. Again, all these links will be in the show notes. So thanks for all you do to express your creativity and share your gifts with the world. I'm Bob Baker saying so long for now. 